Hello, sunshine. I'm back home in the city of our CNN World Headquarters, Atlanta, Georgia. Rise up. It's Thursday, February 15th. Happy Friday Eve. Let's get this show started with something that has not happened in our nation in nearly 150 years. The resolution is adopted. That's House Speaker Mike Johnson officially announcing the impeachment of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. He's only the second cabinet official ever in U.S. history to be impeached. The other was Secretary of War William Belknap way back in 1876. Now, the final count came down to just one vote, and this comes one week after House Republicans' previous impeachment effort fell short. At that time, House Majority Leader Steve Scalise was absent during the vote due to cancer treatment, but his return this time helped push House Republicans to approve the measure. Not every GOP member supported this decision, though, including Representative Ken Buck. You can uh, try to put lipstick on this pig. It is still a pig, and this is a, a terrible impeachment. It sets a terrible precedent. Now, those Republicans who were in favor of impeachment accused Mayorkas of committing high crimes and misdemeanors for his handling of the southern border by failing to enforce border laws during a crisis over immigration. This guy essentially subverted the laws passed by this body, and and that can't stand. cabinet secretary doesn't get to pick and choose which laws they're going to enforce. Okay, so what's next? We do know that it is very unlikely that Mayorkas will be removed by the Democrat-controlled Senate, and we're going to make sure to give you the latest as House Republicans now work to build their case before the Senate. Next, we head up to the International Space Station, where a surgical robot did something that has never been done before. Our Kristen Fisher got an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at how a Nebraska-based team performed a simulated operation using this space-based robot. Sitting on top of this SpaceX rocket when it launched in January was the first surgical robot bound for outer space. So Mira is a, a small surgical robot. Mira, made by a company called Virtual Incision, arrived at the International Space Station in February, and on Saturday, it did something that's never been done before. Saturday was the first time that a surgical robot in space was controlled by surgeons on Earth to perform simulated surgical activities. Virtual Incision provided CNN with exclusive video as six surgeons at the company's headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska, took turns operating the robot after it was powered up by NASA astronauts roughly 250 miles above. The adrenaline was pumping and, you know, I could feel my my heart pounding. Um, It was uh, was really exhilarating, but at the same time, once I saw that, you know, robotic device doing the things that I'm used to it doing, uh, settled down. Dr. Michael Jobst says he's already performed 15 surgeries with Mira during clinical trials on human patients here on Earth, but he's never had to contend with zero gravity or a time delay of about half a second. A split second or, you know, a half a second uh, is going to be significant. So uh, th- this was a big challenge. You can see a left hand with a grasper and a right hand with a pair of scissors. And we use rubber bands here to simulate surgical tissue. So you could think of those rubber bands as perhaps, you know, blood vessels or tendons or other connective tissue that has elasticity. So we're able to, you know, grab hold of uh, the rubber bands and then take the scissors and just basically to cut them. All right, I'm going for it. Yeah. That was one small rubber band, (laughs) but I... Great leap for surgery. Yeah. Pop quiz, hot shot. Which two colors make up the Chinese flag? Blue and white, red and yellow, black and green, or white and red? If you said red and yellow, put your hands up. Red is a popular color in China, symbolizing happiness, luck, and prosperity, while yellow expresses power and represents the earth in traditional Chinese culture. Last week, we mentioned the start of the Chinese Lunar New Year, and the holiday celebrations are still going strong. One of those traditions is lion dancing, a vibrant art form rooted in southern China during the Tang Dynasty over 1,000 years ago. Let's meet a group of young Chinese Americans who are learning to become the next generation of lion dancers, keeping this tradition alive. This may be true decades ago, but you know, many tourists will come down here 
and assume that uh, none of us spoke English, they would always ask you, I, I guess it may be out of courtesy, you know, do you speak English? I'll just look at them and say, I'll, I'll try. Oh, so no. Coming up here is like it's a bonding with uh, the younger guys and the older guys. I think that's important for guys that Asian Americans outside that don't have anywhere to belong. You kind of come here and then you find your own family up here. But lion dancing came to the United States as the Chinese immigrants came to the United States back in the 1800s. Uh, you, you know, because you're in a foreign land, so you had to have hang on to something from your culture. I always thought it's important to, to uh, for us Chinese to embrace our own heritage and our culture. And we're Chinese, we're American. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You know, some of the old traditions. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. All right, so you go bum 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 bum. In our line dance group, they practice all year round because the lion head weighs between 15 to 20 pounds sometimes. Lion dancing during Chinese New Year is to bring in good luck and scare away the bad spirits and, uh, and bringing wealth and prosperity to the New Year's. Each successive generation of American Chinese that are born here, you wander further and further away from your own heritage. You know, on New Year's Eve, you know, the whole family, extended family gets together for a meal and a lot of people, you know, younger people at the time would say, oh man, that's so old fashioned. But, you know, since the pandemic, I think a lot of people came back to and started embracing their, their, uh, their own culture and heritage. You know, everybody expects uh, Chinese Americans to be smartest, the best in their class, and everybody's comparing you to other people's kids. And it's basically a, it's a competition with uh, Chinese Americans. Line dancing is a very big part of my identity because it's kind of to stay in touch with my Chinese culture. And, you know, it gives me reasons to like speak their language and talk to Chinese people and, you know, stay more involved with my own Chinese uh, heritage. When I go out there every year with them, you know, I, I feel the same way as I did uh, 50 years ago, you know, when I was doing it. The feeling doesn't go away, it, you know, it's hard to describe, but it's more like pride. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I caught up with DJ as he was hyping up the upcoming WrestleMania in Philadelphia. And thanks to all of you who submitted questions to my at Coy Wire social accounts, The Rock was delighted to answer some questions from you, our CNN 10 fam. Rocco Gordon in South Oldham Middle School, what is your favorite movie to be in? And then what's your favorite wrestling match of your career from Jordan and Geyser Middle in Michigan? Favorite movie that I've been in? Uh, let's see, it's kind of tough. I got a few of them. Number one would be The Scorpion King because it was my very first movie. And I was learning the business, Baptism by Fire, just thrown into it. It's my first starring role. I felt like, man, I just don't want to suck. And <laughs> I'd like to have a career. You did all right? I did all right. And... I enjoyed the Jumanji movies, and I would say the most fun that I had was probably Jungle Cruise with Emily Blunt and Jauma Collette Sarah, our director. My favorite match was a match that was non-televised, no pay-per-view. It was in Hawaii, and it was in the same arena that my grandparents had struggled in because they were wrestling promoters in the 80s. And I used to go to this arena that's still there, the Blaisdell. And we draw no money. It was always paycheck to paycheck, and it was once a month. And I was able to go back, man, and I'll share this with you. That's it, awesome. When it was announced, hey, Rock is coming back home, uh, it's sold out. Thank you, God. And I was able to enjoy that arena in that way and give back to my family. Well played. Good to see you, brother. You too, man. Like looking in the mirror. I know. He's the Rock. I'm the pebble. <laughs> the Rock rocks and so do you thanks to everyone who subscribed and commented on our cnn 10 youtube page for your shout out request this shout out goes to tunkanuck pennsylvania where the tigers at tunkanuck area school district are looking mighty fine in those stripes and this shout out goes to the beautiful people at butte high school in butte montana rise up let's do this again tomorrow shall we and finish this week strong i'm coy wire and this is cnn 10.